now recognize the gentlelady from Georgia, Ms. McBath, for five Thank minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bezos, you referred to third-party sellers today as Amazon's partners and that your success depends on their success. But over the past year, we've heard a completely different story. As part of this investigation, we've interviewed many small businesses, and they use the words like bullying, fear, and panic to describe their relationship with Amazon. I'm going to share the story of a small business owner who is also a wife and a mother, so you can understand how this is actually affecting the lives of everyday people and why this truly matters. We were a top bookseller on Amazon.com, and we worked day and night very hard towards growing our business and maintaining a five-star feedback rating. Most importantly, this business feeds a total of 14 people which includes three children and one 90-year-old granny. And as we grew, we were shrinking Amazon's market share in the textbooks category. So now in retaliation, Amazon started restricting us from selling. They started with a few titles in early 2019, and within six months, Amazon systematically blocked us from selling the full textbook category. We haven't sold a single book from the past 10 months or probably more. Uh, we were never given a reason. Amazon didn't even provide us with a notice as to why we were being restricted. There was no warning. There was no plan. So Mr. Bezos, after Amazon dis delisted the small business without any apparent reason or notice, she told us that they sent more than 500 separate communications to Amazon including to you, Mr. Bezos, over the past year. There was not a single meaningful response. Do you think this is an acceptable way to treat someone that you described as both a partner and a customer? Uh, no, Congresswoman, and I appreciate uh, you showing me that anecdote, and I would like to talk to her. Uh, it does not at all to me seem like the right way to uh, treat her. Um, and I'm surprised by that. Um, it, and, and it's not the systematic approach that we take, I can assure you. I don't even understand what's going on in that anecdote because we would love for uh, third party sellers to sell books. Uh, Respectively, on the website. sir. So I don't, know, I don't understand it, but I would like to understand it better. And with your permission, I would, sir, I would like I, to get in touch I, with your office. I think, though, that you're missing the point. This is not just about one business. You know, I'm concerned that this is a pattern of behavior. And basically, this pattern of behavior has to change. Mr. Bezos, my question is simply, are you willing to make sure going forward that, you know, um, the numerous sellers that we've talked to, they have problems just like this? And there are more sellers who have told us that they've exhausted all of their options before finally reaching out to you directly as a last resort, but they're still waiting for your response. So what do you have to say uh, to the small businesses who are talking to Congress because you simply won't listen to them? Well, I say that's not acceptable. If we aren't listening to you, uh, I'm not happy about that at all. And I, but I do, I would, you know, if you allow me to disagree a little bit with a piece of this, I do not think that's systematically what's going on. And the evidence that I would suggest would be useful for you to consider in that regard is that uh, third party sellers in aggregate are doing extremely well on Amazon. Uh, they grew from, tw you know, 20 years ago it was zero, and today it's 60% of okay. sales. Third-party sellers are much. growing even thank faster than first-party Thank you so much, that. Mr. Bezos, so, you, uh, thank, you. thank you so much. You said that sellers have many other attractive options to reach customers, but that's not at all what we found in our investigation. According to eMarketer, a source Amazon cited in submissions to this committee, Amazon has nearly seven times the market share of its closest e-commerce competitor. One seller told us that, and I quote, Amazon continues to be the only show in town. No matter how angry sellers get, they have nowhere else to go. So are you saying that these people aren't being truthful when they say that Amazon is the only game in town? Yeah, Congresswoman, with great respect, I, I do disagree with that. I believe that there are a lot of uh, options uh, and some of them are not even listed on that uh, chart. I just looked at it briefly, but I didn't see uh, some that I know of, for example. So I, I think there are a lot of okay, things. Okay, thank it's you. Dynamic. All right, thank you for they're that. More, they're more Mr. and more Bezos, every day. Mr. Bezos, my time is short. 
If Amazon didn't have monopoly power over these sellers, do you think they would choose to stay in a relationship that is characterized by bullying, fear, and panic? With all respect, Congresswoman, I, I, I do not accept the premise of your question. The, that is not how we operate the business. Okay. All right. And in fact, we pr we work very hard to Thank provide fantastic for Thank you tools for, for sellers, and that's why they've been successful. Thank you for that. Mr. Bezos, I'm going to close with giving the bookseller the opportunity to finally be heard by you. Mr. Bezos, we increased our sales on Amazon by five times in the past three years, and we have contributed that much of proportional seller fees to Amazon, we have contributed that much to your business to five times. We followed all the rules that were set by you. We, we please, you know, just help us in earning a livelihood. We beg you, there are 14 lives at stake. Please, please, please help us get back on track. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. I thank the